Hey everyone, today we're going to be working on the Mechatech FW01. So we're going to be working on the rear brakes today. I've been having some trouble, or I've had trouble in the past with the rear brakes. Uh, having a bit of an issue with the gain, had a similar issue with the front and as you'll see when we go through and pull these apart sometimes the pistons inside the calipers can can seize a little bit they can they can uh, get a little bit of mark on there and uh, so today we'll pull apart the rear brakes and we'll inspect those and, and have a look. Uh, something I do when I'm pulling apart the brakes or some other parts in the car is use a plastic tray and put the parts in the tray so I don't get them mixed up. It's pretty important with the brakes to keep uh, the pads as a matched match set as well as a disc if you can. So these trays come in handy, all these segments. So this rear one right now, I can tell straight away we've got a bit of an issue. So we'll just pull this pad off here. You can see there, there's a bit of residue with some brake fluid on there. So not off to a good start, are we? There's a couple little springs on there. Be careful not to lose those springs. Take the disc off. You can see on the discs, slight bit of contamination there probably. These are a fibre disc with a steel pad on the Mechatex, opposite to what you get in the car. In the car, you obviously run a steel disc, fibre pads. Pull the next pad off. Little focus, you can see a little bit of residue there. I mentioned before, we're gonna dismantle these completely. So we'll pull the caliper off. I haven't drained the fluid. I don't hold much brake fluid in these. A point to note is on the Mechatex, there's two types of brake fluid that can be used. The earlier models used a mineral fluid and these later models use dot four. So you can always inter interchange the, or upgrade the seals. So if you've got a mineral oil system, you can upgrade that to the dot four seals. Car's filthy, I should have really given it a clean before we started this. So just release that and there's the caliper. All right, let's take the other side off. I'd love your feedback too. So if you feel like uh, you've got uh, a question or something to add, maybe you spot me doing something incorrectly. Maybe you want to know more detail about what I'm doing. Just comment. I'd love to see your comments. Pads, springs, fibre disc, side looks a bit better. Two securing screws. Push that clip in, release the line, pull that other pad off there. And the caliper. So we'll pull the pistons out. We're gonna pull them out, we'll blow them out with some compressed air. Doesn't take much. Just have to remember to obviously have a bit of a rag there. There's a bit of fluid that comes out and there's a bit of mess. These two look all right. I'll sit them down there. You just need a bit of a clean. 
I've got some new dust seals to put in them too. That'll help. But this kind that that build up there of gunk is exactly what gives you some creep over time. If you can see there, I have to scrape it off with my nail and <clears throat> with a bit of expansion, a bit of thermal expansion with these guys. Over 10 minutes in a race, 20 minutes in a race, they'll soon bind up and cause you some trouble. Well worth doing. So we're going to pull the master cylinder out too. The master cylinder on these sits down in behind there. You probably can't see it that well. But um, I've got a mine and aftermarket carbon exhaust shield here. So we'll pull that off. And a couple other pieces and we'll get rid of that. These body mounts have to come off. <laughs> They're always a bit of a pain to get off these body mounts. I've also got a, um, a, a temperature probe on my engine that links into the Vitaba 7PX that I run. And it's mounted to this carbon support. I'll just show you a quick look at that. So that sits in behind there, just secured there because of vibration. This is Vitaba's um, high range sensor. I think um, they do two models. One goes to about 60 degrees and this other one goes to well over 100. So these um, G2, Zanoa G230 is sort of uh, a good running temperatures, just a bit over 100 degrees Celsius. So, uh, you need the higher rated one if you're going to do it. And the higher rated one doesn't look like that. It comes in a bit of a band that goes somewhere, but it's a bit of a pain in the ass. So with a few modifications, you can fit it to a lug like that, and it makes it so much easier. So we'll put the exhaust off. So I'm going to take this off from the flange. The engine's got to come out anyway, so... It's a good opportunity to take it off now. The engine's coming out for a couple of reasons. Last time I had the engine out, I noticed the, the rear brake line that runs underneath the engine needs some attention, so that'll happen. There's the exhaust out. I run copper gasket on my exhaust. They're easy to clean up. They don't leak. And when you remove them off there, the surface is nice and shiny and clean. Pop again. All right, let's pull this master cylinder out. Take this balance pipe off. You'll note some setups have a bleed nipple there, not a balance pipe. And there's the master cylinder. So we'll start with the disassembly. Four screws on top. These are a good design. There's a volume compensator that sits under the lid here. So that's where it sits. Another thing to look out for maintenance is that that breather in under there is clear and you can see there <clears throat> on this 
some junk in around there. So that's what we're looking to eliminate. We don't want any of that in the system. As the fluid expands in there, it can press against that diaphragm and move. So if it's blocked that hole there, it can't compensate for the expansion in the fluid from temperature. So we need a punch, hammer. Let's get this punched out. All right, so we've got a nice sturdy bit of brass stock here that we're gonna use. We'll just lay a bit of rag down here, just so we don't damage it. And punch and hammer. Just punch this pin out. Have it nice and close to the edge. And pins out. So now we can pull the plunger out. There's the plunger. Some dust seal. You can see the piston in there. It's held in with a circlip. So you need some circlip pliers to pull that out. All right, let's get this retaining clip out. I'll try, I'm pretty tricky. Help if we had a decent set of circlip pliers too. <laughs> well, I just had some trouble getting that out. I actually had to butcher my circuit pliers to get this out, but they're done now. They're called a Mechatech special tool now. Circuit at last. What a nightmare. Next step is to push that plunger out of out of that master cylinder. So there it is there. I just took that little fitting off the end so I can Get in there. There it is there. It's in good condition. The spring's also in there too, without damaging that board. Needs really needs to come out, so you just gotta be careful not to scratch that bore. There it is there. So next stop for everything, sparts washer. So we'll just give these one last clean with some brake cleaner. Some compressed air and just make sure all those little ports are nice and clean. So I got the sewers off the pistons. We're just going to give them a bit of a polish with this uh, Scotch Bright pad, just to get rid of all that build up. Important to clean in where the dust seal goes to a bit of, bit of build up of junk in there. You want that dust seal to seat as well as you can. All right, got some fresh seals to put back in. One thing to note is uh, the seal type for the fluid you're gonna use. I think they might be different colors, I'm not sure, but the these here are black and rated for the dot four. So along with this is a bit of rubber grease. 
I'll normally smear a bit on here. And then just a tiny little bit, otherwise it'll gum up on those seals before they go on the piston. On the piston, these are the main sealing seals. Dust seals to follow. So dust seals. And then just a real light coat around the outside. Same on this one. So that smear will just help those pistons and seals go back into the caliper. Careful. Fit in there nicely. It feel much better. Master cylinder next. Make sure that bore's spotless. Give the seals on this light go with rubber grease. You really need to pay attention to what rubber grease you use. If some isn't compatible with dot force. Spring, piston, feels much better. Much more free. The camera battery just went flat, which means one thing that this video has been way too long. So, we've got a freshly rebuilt master cylinder, we've got some calipers there, good to go back in the car. What we might do is make another part to this video um, that just that touches on bleeding and we'll just. Uh, We'll make a short one, so stay tuned for that one.